Pokemon is my childhood. Deadass. I know y'all probably heard me say this before, but without Pokemon, there would be no Black Macedonchi. But you know what I can never truly get behind? The Pokemon anime. Like, I'm not gonna hold you. The show was fire when I was a kid. Watching Pokemon come to life on the screen was great. But once I got older, I realized the gargantuan issues with the anime. Ash never really moved forward. He just kept on doing the same thing, fumbling his way through battles without learning much. And even when he did, it could all just reset once he got to another region. It was annoying. So I'm sure you guys can guess how turned off I was when someone recommended that I read the Pokemon manga. Dude really tried to tell me it was more fire than the game and the anime combined. Bro, what? But people, once I sat down and picked this shit up, bruh, this manga shut me up so fast, I had to humble myself and apologize to the dude that recommended it to me. How dare I speak blasphemy on Pokemon like that? So here I am, approximately 12 years late. God damn, 12? I'm old as shit, bro. But 12 years later, to hopefully bestow upon you the same feeling of excitement that the manga gave me. So without much further ado, Allow me to introduce you to the story the anime should have been about, Pokemon Adventures. So unlike the anime, it takes elements from the game and makes a story off of it. The manga takes the game and just gives it a better story. So here we follow Red, a hotshot trainer from Pallet Town. Now it turns out Red is the best Pokemon trainer in his town. Nobody else really knows about catching Pokemon or battling with them. So this kid having his own Poliwhirl, which I also, I like a lot about that because he starts off as a Pokemon trainer because he met his Pokemon earlier just because life. But him and his Poliwhirl have been out here taking heads as a Pokemon trainer here in Pallet Town. And the first scene shows him catching a Ninorino and like, you know, flexing on these kids and being like, heh, you wish you guys wish you were as cool as me, you know? And all the kids in the town look up to Red. And already I have a lot of things that I like about this protagonist more than I do about Ash and the game version of Red. On Ash's end, it's real quick. Ash is trash, bro. I don't think we gotta talk about it. If we're talking Ash in like the early portion of the anime, you know, like Hoenn, Johto, Kanto, all that shit, Ash was garbage. Like I said in the beginning of the video, he kept on going through battles. He was supposed to learn lessons from these battles, but even when he, even on the short chance that he did, it would all get reset once you move to another season or whatever. Ash just kept on getting bodied. And it's one thing if you get bodied, but it's another thing if you get bodied because you didn't listen to what the, the lessons that your past self taught you. You know what I mean? So the story focusing on Red and Red already being a decent trainer, I'm already hyped for it because we're gonna actually get some character growth here. Ash had little to no character growth. It was like very, very basic. I feel like the growth that he has so far right now should have just been given to him in the first season of Pokemon, but that's besides the point. The reason why I like this Red more than his gaming counterpart though is because the red from the game was silent as shit for everything, bro. Like when he's leaving Pal Town for the first time and his mom is like, all right, goodbye, son. See you whenever. Kid says nothing. When my man ruins his rival's dreams and then watches as this dude's grandfather comes up and is like, damn, bro, you got beat so quick when you just became champion. As he watches that, the kid says nothing. How are you so quiet, bro? Kind of kind of scary, to be honest with you. Like, I feel like it didn't really hit me until you had to go up against him in Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal. And the dude was silent for that battle, too. Like, Red, you good, bro? You, you can talk to us, fam. We're not going to bite. But this manga Red has personality. He fucking talks, which is just already a plus. You know, I feel like a lot of story was missed out on because Red just did not talk in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. But, you know, here we're going against that and we're giving him some actual character. Good. So after flexing on the kids in town, he goes moseying around the place until he runs the Team fucking Rocket. I'm surprised they threw Team Rocket in so early because even in the game, they weren't even mentioned until a little bit later, you know? But I do like that these guys are seen as more menacing from Jump. I feel like when they tried making Team Rocket look menacing, it was hard because Jesse and James was always there clowning around so you couldn't really take them seriously. Anyway, these guys talking about a phantom Pokemon that they're looking for in the area and Red hears this and he's like, phantom Pokemon? Say less, I'm trying to catch me that shit. So he musters up all his Pokeballs, it's, it's adorable. And also one really small detail about this manga that I really like is that the Pokeball covers are clear, so you can see the miniaturized Pokemon within their Pokeballs. It's a short detail, but I like it because they at least try to explain what happens within the Pokeball by showing the shrinked Pokemon. Because when I was younger, I was just like, 
I guess it get transported to a different world? I don't know. How does a Moltres fit in this little ball that could fit in my hand? Nothing makes sense. But anyway, Red goes walking around the forest and he finally finds the phantom Pokemon and it turns out to be fucking Mew. So in the first chapter, we already have Team Rocket being showed, which, I, which was crazy. But we also have a legendary Pokemon being shown and I'm gonna talk about why this is a good idea later. So Red watches his phantom Pokemon fight this other mystery trainer who we're gonna find out later is actually Blue. So Blue's battling this Mew with his Charmander, but after a few hits, he stops. Then Red swoops in and is like, bro, what are you doing? I've never seen this Pokemon before. You're not gonna catch this shit? Sends Poliwhirl and Poliwhirl gets bodied in one hit. So Red is like, whoa, Poliwhirl. And then Blue's like, bro, are you dumb? Like, did you not see his level? It's right there. It's right on top of, of, of its name. Like, bro, look. So Red's like, you know what? I am garbage. Those kids from before were talking about this guy named Professor Oak and I didn't fuck with him at first, but if he's a Pokemon professor, Fuck it, I gotta learn how to be better somehow. So he makes it his mission to go to Professor Oak to figure out how to become a better Pokemon trainer. And this is why I think the whole legendary Pokemon being shown was so important because it gives Red a reason to go on his Pokemon journey. I'm gonna be real with you, I don't even remember Ash's reason except for one to become a Pokemon master. But in the games, it was just like, oh, you know, you're 10 years old, so you just gotta leave home and go into this dangerous ass world and cast these weapons of mass destruction for, for, your, for the rest of your life. Here, we have an actual reason as to why Red has to go on his journey, and it's because he took an L from Legendary Pokemon, and he wants to get better in hopes that one day he can cast his Pokemon. So Red goes to Professor Oak's lab, and in video game fashion, he just waltz right in without even knocking. Then as he's looking at the Pokemon, Professor Oak busts in and is like, hey yo, what you doing in my crib, bro? And this scares Red, so he accidentally frees all the Pokemon in the lab. In response, Red is like, yo bro, I'm sorry, let's go get your Pokemon together. They go running around the city, they catch up the Pokemon up until they get into Viridian City where they find the last one, a Bulbasaur. Now at first, Professor Oak is like, hey Bulbasaur, come through, I'm your master, bro. But Bulbasaur is like, I don't fuck with you fam, you caught me and never sent me out once. I barely even know you. But Red, being the shonen protagonist that he is, uses the power of friendship to show Bulbasaur that you don't have to resort to violence, bro. It's okay, we could be friends. Then to prove how strong their power of friendship is, a wild Matoke appears. And I appreciate this segment because right now they're in Viridian Gym. The leader of Viridian Gym is Giovanni. Sorry, spoiler alert. But Machoke is a Giovanni-ass Pokemon. It, Pokemon fans will know what I'm talking about, but just know Machoke is a Pokemon that Giovanni would have. I checked, he actually does not own a Machoke, which surprises the fuck out of me or I'm a champ, but Machoke is is a, is definitely a Pokemon that I feel like Giovanni would and should have. Po Pokemon people, get, get on that. Make a version of Giovanni with the Machamp. I don't know what y'all do. Anyway, the wild Machoke appears and then Red and Bulbasaur use the power of friendship to beat it. And seeing this, Professor Oak is like, hold up, all right, I, I see you. You, I, I thought you were some punk kid, but you actually do care about these Pokemon. But then he gets him in the window. He's like, hey bro, if you wanna be a Pokemon master, you gotta complete this Pokedex, a digital encyclopedia of Pokemon. The reason why I say this is the window is because in every single game, he, the professor always hits you with, hey, complete my Pokedex, do my work for me. Bro, I'm trying to battle and become the champion. I never said I was gonna catch all the Pokemon and do what you're supposed to be doing for you. Like, Professor Oak, I could kinda understand why, cause he's old, but like, once we get into Johto, Professor Elm, you're young. Go do your laboratory jobs and go catch these Pokemon and research them yourselves. I am a 10 year old. Don't tell me to do your shit for you. But anyway, he gives her the Pokedex and he's like, you should go on a Pokemon journey and fill this Pokedex up on your way. With that, Red dips and heads to Viridian Forest. So Red's looking around the forest trying to catch some Pokemon, right? And he hears some ruffling, so he sends Poliwhirl out and then Poliwhirl comes back, beat, and he comes to find out that it's his old rival Blue out here looking for a Kangaskhan. So Red's looking around the forest trying to catch Pokemon and shit. And one thing I do respect is that Red catches Pokemon off screen and they'll let you know. I like that because we don't have to see every Pokemon that Red catches. I feel like that limits how many he can catch. Are y'all really gonna show us him catching over 150 Pokemon? 
I'm not trying to see that. I don't know who else wants to see that, but I know a lot of people really don't feel like seeing all that shit. But it lets you know that Raid is just not out here battling. He's also trying to fill the Pokedex. And it also, it's cool because he does throw out these other Pokemon sometimes in random ass battles throughout the manga. So you will only see like his main his main two Pokemon like Bulbasaur and Poliwhirl. You're gonna see other Pokemon show up that you wouldn't think Red would have. Anyway, after Poliwhirl gets bodied, in true Shonen fashion, Red tries to punch Blue. But Blue being the Sasuke ass nigga that he is, blocks his shit just like stupid. This is Pokemon, you're supposed to fight with your Pokemon, not your hands. Then as the two are arguing, a wild Kangaskhan appears. Turns out this is the exact Pokemon Blue was looking for. So Blue starts going off, but Red peeps some shit and he stops the whole fight. He realizes Kangaskhan was out here protecting its baby the whole time. So he heals it and sends it on his merry way, thus showing the difference in Blue and Red's heart. While Red is more tender and cares more about these Pokemon, Blue was a little bit more cynical and mostly cares about strats and battles, kind of like Paul from Diamond and Pearl. But after that whole situation, Red realizes that this guy's Professor Oak's grandson because he pulls out a Pokedex just like his own. With that, they exchange names and this sparks the rivalry between Blue and Red that will go on for the rest of the manga. So we fast forward to Peter City. There's a wild Pikachu causing havoc, so Red catches it, blah, blah, blah. But this Pikachu does not fuck with Red at all. Like, y'all remember in the first episode of Pokemon when Pikachu was out here tormenting Ash? Basically, same energy here. And to make matters worse, while Red is out here training this Pikachu, fucking Blue shows up talking that hot shit, bro. Now, it's funny because in the first few chapters, I was like, you know what? I like this Blue. He's not that much of an asshole like, you know, Gary in the anime or Blue in the game. But nah, nah, I was wrong. This guy's just as much of an asshole as those guys, bro. My man's like, heh, if you want to get the first gym badge, you're gonna have to fight Brock. And I don't think you could do that with an electric mouse you can't even train. Stupid. Then he tells Red he's gonna get his first badge before he does and just dips. So now Red's life sucks because the first gym leader is here. This Pikachu he just caught refuses to listen to him. The Pokemon Center is down because of, I don't know, maintenance or some shit. And his other Pokemon who will listen to him are too weak to do anything because of Viridian Forest. So he's about to go to this gym, which may I remind you, is a rock type gym with just a Pikachu who does not fuck with him. Pikachu already does not do well against rock types, but it doesn't fuck with you either, bro. You're gonna die. This shit reminds me of Pokemon Yellow when the strongest Pokemon you had in your team and during the whole Brock fight was Pikachu with, at the most, Quick Attack because you couldn't use Thundershock, you couldn't use Thunder Wave or anything like that. All you had was Quick Attack and you just had to pray to God you would fucking <laughs> do enough damage to win and not die, you know? I forgot how many levels I had to grind to get Pikachu to do anything against Onix, but shit was wild. So Red starts his gym challenge, and in the manga, the gym, instead of it being something where you just battle mad trainers and then kind of go and then end up going to face the gym leader, it's more like a tournament where like people watch as you're battling these the different trainers and then you get to the gym leader, you know? And it's like in a fighting ring, a boxing ring, so it looks even cooler. But since Pikachu refuses to listen to Red, he instead relies off of his weaker Pokemon and just use the type advantages to his advantage. So while Poliwhirl and Bulbasaur are on Red, he bodies the competition. And I'm, I'm, I'm low-key proud of Red, you know? Cause he's out here one-shotting Pokemon, making sure that nobody gets hurt. But once he gets to Brock, he can't use other Pokemon because they are way too weak. So he sends out Pikachu and Pikachu is already not fucking with Red. I feel, I believe he tries to electrocute Red before they even try to battle. So Red apologizes to Pikachu, actually says sorry for bringing him into this because he knows this Pikachu didn't want to be involved. Like Pikachu was over, was over there chilling, eating some food. Like they didn't want to go into a battle. They didn't think it was going to be a part of this. And I guess that apology is all Pikachu needed because after that, Pikachu electrocutes the Onyx and get this, the Onyx explodes. Now, this is crazier than even the anime. If you don't remember correctly in the anime, I believe Pikachu set off the sprinklers in the gym which hurt Onyx, which then makes you wonder why the fuck would you have sprinklers in a wa in a rock gym? But that's besides the point. But this man Pikachu zapped an Onyx to cause it to explode. Onyx, you're a rock type. Aren't you immune to electricity? And since when did electricity explode rocks? And bro, is Onyx dead? D did it die? I have so many questions, bro. So I guess this counts as their win and Red gets his first badge. And after that, him and Pikachu decide to be cool. Kind of, not really. They still got beef with each other. I'm gonna be real with you. Now, the next part of our story takes us to Misty, the water gym leader from Cerulean City. We find her in a scene that is raw as fuck, like people. She's in the middle of battling a Gyarados. She's fucking bleeding. This Gyarados looks like it's ready to eat her. Like, bro, shit is unreal. 
Luckily, Red pops in, beats the Gyarados with his Bulbasaur, and catches it, which is also kind of crazy, because, bro, Red, we, the manga just started. How, how are you catching a Gyarados so early? Like, you're not even in the second city yet. Bro, chill. But it turns out this Gyarados is actually Misty's Gyarados. A while ago, she was chilling with it, and then a bunch of random people stole it, and then when she got it back, it turned into this beast. Red being the nice guy that he is, is like, no one deserves to be attacked by their own Pokemon. I'm gonna talk to Professor Oak, and we're gonna solve this together. So they go, talk to Oak, and Oak is like, this sounds like some Team Rocket ass shit, bro. Turns out Team Rocket is out here experimenting on Pokemon, fam. Now this may sound whatever, because I feel like Pete, they've alluded to experimenting on Pokemon in the games a lot, but when we get into what they're actually doing, you're gonna see why this is some next level shit. So Oak is like, if y'all wanna deal with these guys, go to Mount Moon. I heard they're over there looking for the Moonstone. With that, Red and Misty make their way over to Mount Moon. They are taking out some goons, they find the leader of this team with the Rhyhorn. Now at first, the Rhyhorn's no problem, you know, they beat it without breaking a sweat. But then, the leader pulls out a syringe and injects the Rhyhorn with whatever the fuck, probably steroids, and it evolves immediately into Rhydon! Bro, what the fuck? First we have Onyx exploding, and now we have Pokemon steroids? We just got here, it's chapter seven is chapter seven and this shit already got next level like this is a far cry away from just them stealing pokemon in the games and the anime like bro what what are y'all doing fam but it only gets worse under leader's command ride on attacks misty not just her pokemon but misty herself and misty gets fucking eated bro children are getting bodied how did we get here then after that ride just attacking red luckily for them pikachu saws a rock from out the ceiling of the cave, which drops and causes a distraction for Red and Missy to escape. I don't know, bro. Pikachu is just doing whatever the fuck it wants. I like how savage it is, but I'm also wondering how it's doing what it's doing. But Pikachu lives in his own little world. It's OP as fuck. It does what it wants. After that incident, Red follows Misty back to her place, and my man starts talking all this shit about how he clutched the whole situation. He's like, bro, Misty's garbage. I saved both of us. I am the hero of this manga. Say my name, bitches. Say my name. But Misty's like, bro, get off your fucking high horse. We have to train because Team Rocket is out here wiling. We gotta get prepared, bro. So after some convincing, Red finally agrees, and he also finds out that Misty is the second gym leader. So after their whole training arc, which happens off screen, Red dips, and I believe he gets the second gym badge? They don't really show that, so I'm just gonna go ahead and assume he does. Now we fast forward to Vermilion City. Here is where Red meets the Pokemon fan club, another nod to the video games. But I like this nod a little bit more because they turned it into a whole arc, bro. Turns out these guys are having issues with their Pokemon getting stolen too. So Red's like, you know what, I'm on the case. I've already dealt with these guys before, I got y'all. Because of a previous escapade he made on there, he realizes, hold up, they might be smuggling Pokemon and putting them on the SSN, a cruise ship in the city. So Red sneaks on the boat and there he finds Lieutenant Surge, the third gym leader. And this is the part where it gets crazy, people. Lieutenant Surge admits to stealing people's Pokemon because he claims it frees him from domestication and selling them to the highest bidder. Lieutenant Surge, if you want to free Pokemon, you can't just sell them to make more. That doesn't make any sense, bro. But the reason why this is so cool is because this is a gym leader who's also a bad guy. They put, I'm not sure if he's a part of Team Rocket yet. This is somebody who's a higher up in the Pokemon League company thing or whatever. This adds a whole new layer to the plot that was not present in the game and I fuck with that so much. I feel like with the gym leaders in the first games, you just kind of had to make your own guess about that what they were involved in. And it's kind of cool that they're doing this with Lieutenant Surge because he was already somebody that people assumed had a really dark background. Like he alluded to this Pokemon war that happened a while ago and he's Lieutenant Surge, so he probably took, he was probably involved in that war. So just his presence in the presence in the Pokemon world, it feels off. But to have him here smuggling Pokemon, actually doing villainous shit, bro, hit me, caught me way off guard when I first read this. And to add on to the craziness, this man pulls out his trump card, an Electabuzz who was so savage, he can't even keep it in a Pokeball. This thing shows up in chains! Like that snaps the chains off, and once again, just like the other leader from Team Rocket, fucking attacks Red, not his Pokemon. So Red dips, hides somewhere, and then Lieutenant Surge finds him again. And then this man traps Red while separating his Poliwhirl away from him and electrocutes him with Electabuzz, bro! And then he throws his kid overboard. 
Bro, what? Where is my Pokemon? Where is my kid-friendly Pokemon? This is not kid-friendly Pokemon. Kids got yeeted. This shit is wild. I know the Pokemon anime and even the game sometimes got to this level, but it still took so long. Like, this is Pokemon Adventures Red and Blue, the first entry into the Pokemon manga. And already we have kids getting close to dying. And from what I've heard, from what I've heard, Pokemon and characters actually do get yeeted in this manga. So just letting y'all know. Anyway, we already is about to die in the ocean. Fucking Poliwhirl evolves into Poliwrath, saves Red, hops on the boat, and slaps Lieutenant Surge and his Pokemon off the boat. With that, Red gives everybody back their Pokemon, and Lieutenant Surge goes missing. And once again, not clear here whether or not he got the third badge from doing this, but I'm guessing he probably yoinked the shit out of his pocket before he threw him off. I don't know. With that, we fast forward to Lavender Town, the home of Pokemon Creepypastas. Red meets Mr. Fuji, and Mr. Fuji's like, oh, we got a ghost problem, and because we got ghosts nobody trusts anybody here but red hears about ghosts and is like i bro whatever you say but mr fuji catches attention when he tells him that blue was here two weeks ago he went to the pokemon tower and he's been missing ever since now red is like hold on i may not like the guy but missing for two weeks nah i gotta go look for him fam so red enters the pokemon tower and i kid you not he runs into pokemon zombies bro he starts fighting pokemon zombies shit is crazy and for the people who play the game i don't even think this is like a self scope type thing like i think he's actually fighting p dead pokemon bodies who are being possessed by ghastly shit is kind of creepy not gonna hold you and things get even creepier when he runs into blue who's been possessed by a ghost pokemon i mean the good thing is that it's charmander evolved into charmeleon so you know cool but now blue is against red and he's trying to kill him luckily red snaps blue out of his trance then afterwards red is like hey we should leave because there are ghosts here let's not stay here longer than we have to but blue's like no nah, no nah, fuck that somebody did this to me bro i'm gonna find out who's responsible for all this and beat they ass so blue goes running up to the pokemon tower while red is like bro please let's just leave this is not cool like there are ghosts here why are you doing this to me then once they get to the top they find out that the person responsible is the same team rocket leader from mount moon and it's revealed that this guy is actually koga the gym leader bro he reveals that he's part of the team rocket elite triad which means there are gym leaders who work for Team Rocket. And like I said with the whole Lieutenant Surge thing, that adds a whole new level to the story and I fuck with it. Really think about how dope the Pokemon story would have been if they were gym leaders who were secretly evil. And you had to like find out about the secret cancel or like Illuminati of gym leaders and take them out on the side to actually take out Giovanni. Like what if in the last gym, when before you fight Giovanni, the trainers you fight are actually the elite triad, the gym leaders who work for Team Rocket. Bro, so many things coming from this manga that the anime and the game should have took, but they didn't. I don't know why. So Koga, working for Team Rocket, also lives that fuck them kids lifestyle. So he sends out his R book, and I kid you not, people, he tries to melt red and blue using Arbuck's acid. Then in a crazy ass twist, just when you thought things could not get any crazier, blue kills the Arbuck by cutting it in half with his Charmeleon. What? This is what happened to fainting Pokemon? This Ar there is no question about it. This Pokemon is dead. Arbuck died. Blue just caught his first Poke body. What the fuck? With that, Koga leaves, red and blue part ways, and to find out what happens next on Red's crazy ass adventure, you're gonna have to read the manga for yourself. Now people, I cannot stress enough that this is just the tip of the iceberg. To remind you, like I said before, people die in this manga fam. They show more Pokemon experimentation like the legendary birds fucking fuse at one point, and there's even a part where Red goes freaking missing because of unknown circumstances, and some other kid named Yellow has to take his Pikachu and go on a quest to look for him. Like, this story goes all over the place, and it's so, so fucking good. I'm just surprised that literally, like, that so little was taken from the manga and used in other Pokemon storylines, you know what I mean? And if you are not already convinced that this is fire, bro, the Pokemon creator himself, Satoshi Chidori said, this manga best encompassed the world that he was trying to create. And that is all for today, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you guys so much for all your monthly donations. Without you guys, I would not be able to keep the channel going. And special shout out to my a rank patrons, the guys who give a whopping $10 each month. Third Dynasty, Blake Roberts, Broken Rosary, Curtis Clarkson, Daniel Gonzalez, Dark Titan, 
Dylan Mason, Jakari Scott, Jody Boy, Mustard Gas, Nello Lobo, Sugi, Victor Garcia, and Zach Haji. I can't express how thankful I am for all the extra help. It truly means a lot. So with that being said, be easy, stay lit, stay healthy out there, Black Lives Matter, and don't forget, you can do whatever the hell you put your mind to. All it takes is practice and time. Peace out, y'all.